this, um, even if I under don't understand. Welcome to our 11th episode of Apex Instant Tips, coming to you live every Friday at 12.05 EST for five minutes only from Massachusetts. My name is Hayden. And I'm Anton, and I am happy to once again join you, Hayden, in the In Some Cinematic Universe. Um, today, I am hoping for a little time warp in this universe uh, because we have a lot to cover in five minutes. Um, Indeed, we do. Uh, so, so I will. I will go ahead and share my screen and let's kick it off. So uh, today's tip is based off of a recent experience I had working with a client solving a particular issue. Um, and let me go ahead and kick off this timer, let's not cheat. But it is about uh, the uh, how to safely handle substitution unescaping. And uh, let's go ahead and set the scene. So I have an application to which you also have access, Anton. Um, and the uh, requirement is we have an admin who wants to be able to set a notification that is dis uh, that displays on all pages. And the kicker is um, they want, uh, this admin is HTML literate, and they want to be able to include HTML tags in the notification that displays on all pages. However, as you can see on this page in particular, we can see that the HTML is being unescaped. Oh, escaped actually, in this case, escaped. Right, escaped, yes, uh, good catch. Uh, so it is being escaped and I am referencing it uh, via this substitution syntax. And so a Apex is doing a, a favor for you. They're, they're watching out for you by escaping this and, and um, it's a security feature really. I'll point out really quickly, if this were an, uh, an application item, they wouldn't do this. And I think that's actually someplace, I think they should escape application items as well. But to get around this, um, the solution, uh, the poor solution, the intermediate solution is to put bang raw right there, that says just spit out exactly what is in that item out to the screen, do not escape it. Um, so there we have it, let's see what we got. That looks great, right. right, but, but now- in, in so doing, Anton, have I inadvertently introduced a security flaw? Indeed you have. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use my screen, I have access to the same application. Um, so from my screen, I'm gonna create my own notification and my notification looks like this. I'm putting in a little bit of JavaScript in the notification and it is essentially stealing your cookies. So let's do that. We'll switch right back to your screen, let you refresh the page. Um, and there you have it. That is a problem. What With that information, I could, I could actually gather that information. I could become you in not only in your application, but in your Apex Builder session right now. I could, in, in fact, our viewers right now, if they're fast enough, could go ahead and do that. So that's right. Let's let's close off this flaw as, as quickly as possible, Anton, before someone else gets to it. Right. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to say I feel like you should take care of this on the way in and on the way out. As the user, if you want to create a validation on this, let's validate the data that they're putting in so that people are not allowed to put in bad data. We're going to put a validation on here. We're going to make use of the apex underscore escape dot HTML allow list. This is a new feature. It's either in 20 dot, I think it's in a 20 dot release, this thing. Um, Apex underscore escape dot HTML allow list allows you to whitelist what you want to allow as far as HTML goes. And I'm going to, while you're building this, um, I'm going to say, if you go out and start saying you just want to strip out script and allow everything other than script, um, then uh, <laughs> then um, we, I'm going to say that's not going to work for you. It, the, you try to, if you try to just strip out script, you are going to fail. Somebody will be able to get around it. The right way is a whitelist, which is what we've done here. So um, now, look at that. Look at that. You cannot yeah. put that in. But the other thing is, we're not positive that that you're the only. This application is the only application that has access to that data. We want to make sure we escape it on the way out as well. Well, so, and in fact, it is already the case that this bad data is already in the table. That is true. So let's go make sure we take care of it on the way out. So as we as we get that item, we're going to escape it there. So we're still going to push it out as raw, but when we retrieve the item itself, we're going to go in here and we're going to um, we're going to apply that to it. So if you want to go ahead and do that, Hayden, um, uh, there we go, and save that and run it now. 
that's great. So it escapes that, but it does not escape if you put in the tags that you explicitly said you want to allow. Um, right. I really, really encourage people to um, use a whitelist for this kind of thing and not to use a way to try and pull up script because somebody will be able to get around that. And there we have it. It still renders this bolding HTML. Absolutely. I am amazed that we managed to do this in the amount of time that we have. Um, well, we really booked it. Yeah, let's, let's turn off the clock. Let, let's turn off the clock. And uh, I think I rushed a little bit. I definitely want to pause a little bit on the solution that we implemented because I, I think we rushed a little bit. This is the solution, HTML escape allow list. That's, that is exactly right. Um, I think we even got that within our 19 seconds. If we hadn't turned off the clock, we could have pulled that back up. Um, so the ampersand or the bang raw and the HTML allow list go hand in hand. Yes. Um, those are really uh, important to make use of together. Um, so very cool that you can bypass these uh, Apex security features, but you have to do so responsibly. Exactly right. And we're going to call this a win. We kind of rambled on a little bit after the five minutes, but um, anybody that feels like they want to check out now, you have received the tip. Um, Hayden, I'm going to stick around, do Wisdom of the Week, um, review our puzzler. But for those folks that want to leave now, don't forget to do all of the things, uh, like subscribe, all of the rest. Um, I actually saw that the um, artist responsible for our button is watching our show. Exciting stuff. Maybe Pretty high praise right there. Another piece of art. Pretty high praise. Um, so Hayden, let's start with the wisdom of the week. This wisdom of the week comes to you con uh, courtesy of a financial institution that I am uh, a client of. They sent me that very thing, a password keeper in red letters to save either in my wallet or right on my desk so that not only can I have access to my passwords, everyone that sees Password Keeper. <laughs> password security is the bane of my existence. Yes, but it, it, you know, when you have security, don't just bypass it, right? If you want to take this and put it in a safe, okay. <laughs> so I don't know if that's exactly wisdom, but it certainly struck me as appropriate for today. I like it. <laughs> All right. Um, well, our next item today, and of course, if people have questions, feel free to ask questions. Um, we will um, <laughs> they um, we will answer those throughout uh, this topic. But while people are considering questions that they might have, um, let's get the answer to the puzzler. I'm going to set the stage. As you may recall. Um, we had two beers. One was a Miller Lite, and I think the other one may have been a Barrel House Z uh, Stout, but it's also possible it was a dark beer. It may have been a Barrel House Z Porter. Um, I can't recall which it was. Hey, can you hear me okay? I can, uh, but if you move the mic closer. Uh, I'll get the mic a little closer. There we go. Um, so, um, if you, uh, if you want to fill us in on the puzzle, it was we had two glasses, one Miller Lite, one Barrel House Z. We took one teaspoon, about five milliliters of the Barrel House Z. We put it into the Miller Lite. We stirred it up. We took the Miller Lite and put it back, uh, one teaspoon back into the Barrel House Z. And the question is, is there more Barrel House Z in the Miller Lite or more Miller Lite in the Barrel House Z? And I think you actually um, enjoyed doing this puzzler yourself. I did. And, and the reason why I enjoyed it is because um, my first instinct was wrong. Uh, I think this uh, puzzler tricks your intuition. Uh, the intuition might be that because you're taking the uh, the pure Barrel House Z and moving it into the Coors Light, mixing it up, and then taking the now mixture of Coors Light and Barrel House Z and moving it back into the Barrel House Z, that somehow there's going to be more Barrel House Z in the, in the Coors Light, the Miller Light, sorry, than there is Miller Light in the Barrel House Z. However, and uh, I recommend that everyone do the numbers themselves if they if they mistrust this answer, we're not going to show the numbers. But do the numbers, look it up. Um, it is in fact the case that the correct answer is there's the same amount of the other in each. Ah, yes, indeed, that's right. And, and much like you, it, if you if you start just thinking it, um, it, you know, in your head, your intuition may fail you. Uh, feel free to comment, tweet at us, and tell us that we're wrong. But um, I recommend before you tell us we're wrong, do the math yourself. It is eye-opening. Um, yes. Excellent. 
Excellent. And Hayden, uh, I had fun with the puzzler. I'm hoping maybe next week uh, you can bring one to me. I, I can certainly try to stump him. All right. Well, we have a question here. Hello. Is there a way to, to escape SQL statements, like little bubble tables or DBMS assert? Um, so I've been doing a lot in this space uh, just now. And it, the answer is DBMS assert, in fact. Um, that's what you want to use. The DBMS assert has a number of um, different things you can do in end quote literal. Um, you can simply uh, check to see that it's a valid name. There's there are a number of things there. I'm not quite sure what the the rest of the if if there's more to the question than that. But DBMS assert is your friend when it comes to escaping SQL. Yeah, um, could we get the question back on the screen for one second? Right. Yeah. No. I I I, I think we answered the question. Right, because um, DBMS assert, if you use it, um, end quote, end quote, literal, it will check to um, to check to see that what it's in quoting is valid and, and so forth, and it will it will take care of all all of that kind of thing. Um, and if if you want, you can actually have it check to see if it's a valid database object as well. Um, I also want to call out that um, some of you may uh, intuit that a good um, application for the use case that we described would be to use the rich text editor instead of just an open text area field. And that would that would be a good practice. It would certainly mean that you don't even need to be HTML literate to be able to provide the HTML markup. Uh, however, as was implied in our tip, that, that isn't sufficient. It is merely an, an extra good practice that, are, that could also be added to the mix. That's right. I think you would still want both the validation and the um, escaping on the so on the way in and on the way out. Right. Very very good point there. Um, well, short of additional questions, Hayden, um, I want to thank everybody. They have wasted, and uh, both of you have wasted uh, a perfectly good 12 minutes. Um, please uh, join us next week, and don't forget to do all of the things. Um, write your congressman, send letters to your friends, um, smash the bell, uh, and all that. Send out the word. See you next week. Bye-bye, then. <clears throat>